Good morning. Oh, are you shocked? Good morning. Good morning. I'm more shocked than you. So <laughs> calm down. Um, yeah, I want to thank God for this opportunity. I guess <laughs> when Bramu Bramu didn't call me, he called my husband, and my husband said, "I have some exciting news for you." <laughs> but I'm not sure I was excited when I was told. <laughs> I've never considered Bramo confused, but I, yesterday I actually thought he might have been a bit confused. This morning I want to talk to you about the liberty of the excellent place. Um, we've been discussing the excellent place, and I think in si simple terms, I can define the excellent place as where God is. Um, because we know that the excellent place is obviously um, a dispensation of the secret place. So, as Bramo always says, I am where God is, you are where God is, and that's the excellent place. So we're going to be looking at Galatians 5, verse 13. Um, I'm coming, I lost it. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Um, that's the end goal. That's where we will end. That's, I hope you've all found it. Or you're, yes, good. So we'll end there, but I'm going to take you back from chapter 1. And from chapter one, Paul has been, Paul talks about his past, talks about his account of um, the journey, how he got to where he was at that point of writing. Um, he was telling them about how he was so zealous, about how he was persecuting the church, all in a bid to prove that everything he's now seeing, this transformation that they were now experiencing, this new Paul, was truly of God and not of man. And it could not have been of man because this was somebody that was once actively against the activities and everything considered, everything con um, tied to the church. And in verse two, in chapter two, sorry, two verse 14, it says, and this occurred because of false brethren secretly brought in who came in by stealth to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they may bring us into bondage, to whom we did not yield submission even for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. At this point, he was talking about the wiles of the enemy and how these people came in to distract them from the cause or from what they were doing. And I bring that in because if you juxtapose it with life, this, these are daily occurrences. If God, this morning Kizito was talking about how God has given you a word, it's either you've heard it or you've not. And if you've heard it, we know because you're acting on it or you're responding to it. If you've not, if you've not heard it, you don't respond. So if God says you'll be here, and then the devil says, I've put you here, and you start crying, we know that you heard what the devil said. If you maintain that you are here, even though everything around you seems to prove that you are indeed here, then you have no head. And that's what Paul is highlighting here. And it was funny that that's the same thing that we're learning in Dominion class today, that the liberty which God has given you, the devil is, is on a mission, like Kizito said, a long-term mission to take that away from you. But then the goal of that liberty, and we see that in chapter um Chapter 5, verse 13, is that the truth of the gospel continues with you. So that is what the liberty here represents. I know when you probably listen to it the first time, the liberty of the excellent place, you're expecting to hear all the promises that God has in store for you, all the things that he wants to give you, and all, all that is nice and good. And I'm sure we are all well aware of these things at this point in time, that it goes beyond that. I remember reading... Um, purpose-driven life, and then he said that your world is, a, is, is really a drop 
in the mighty ocean, like God has a grand scheme of things that he has set in motion. And so if you look at yourself and your world and your surroundings, I mean, even if we consider it in just this room alone, if I take myself out, everybody else is the protagonist in their own story. So I can't look at it from that point of view and decide that it must be about me. It cannot. And when you consider that, you will now begin to appreciate the fact that there's a bigger plan. So the liberty or the excellent place and everything that God has put in the excellent place is beyond your success, your comfort, your luxuries, and towards the goal that the gospel will continue with you. So if you don't leave here with anything today, remember that the gospel must continue with you. I actually tap your chest and say the gospel must continue with me. Yeah, because we are all conduits of the gospel of Jesus. We are all conduits of the gospel of Christ. And it's not, there's no special dispensation for leaders or for um, people who appear to be called. Everybody is called. And that's why it is important. And so the excellent place, everything we are learning, you know, even this topic, the liberty, what we learned at um, um, Dominion class, the point is that the gospel must continue with you. And I know that it is easy to look at it as um, a, a remote responsibility or a responsibility that we all don't share, which is why I made, made the point that there's no special dispensation for anybody else. This is a level playing field where the gospel must continue with you. And you see that in verse 6 of chapter 2. And Paul says, but for those who seem to be something, whatever they were, it makes no difference to me. God shows no personal favoritism to no man. For those who seem to be something added nothing to me. And he continues in verse 7. Um, no, Galatians 2 verse 6. You, you have five verse 30 now. Okay, I'll, I'll read it again. Okay, verse 7 is up. But on the contrary, when they saw that the gospel for the uncircumcised had been committed to me, as the gospel for the uncircumcised was to Peter. For he who worked effectively in Peter for the apostleship to the circumcised also worked effectively in me towards the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that had been given to me, they gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship, that we should go into the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. The point here is that the circumcised here represents the non-Jews, the, um, the Gentiles, and then the circumcised are the Jews. And in our dispensation today, you might refer to the circumcised as the elites. And, and when I say elites, I mean the elites in church, you know, the people that you would presume are leaders, people who are, you know, have something up and about, have something doing, they are serving. Um, we will refer to them for the purpose of this conversation as the elite. And then the rest of the members will be the non-elite. And I'm breaking this down so that we all appreciate the sense of responsibility, of the collective responsibility that we ought to have. And so Paul here says that it's the same gospel. It's the same message. It's the same spirit that is working in all of us. Which brings me back to the point that this is indeed a level playing field for all of us because the effect is the same. Whether you're talking to Jews or non-Jews, whether you're talking to workers or non-workers, whether you're talking to prayer leaders or non-prayer leaders, it's the same spirit at work in all of us. It's the same message that you don't... I mean, I think even here we're lucky because everybody sits on the same chair. But when you go to other churches, you know, they have the whole gold embroidery fancy stuff. I remember once I made the mistake of sitting in the chair and somebody said, hey, you can't sit there, that's a pastor today. I'm just like, calm down. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know. I'm not going to sit there on purpose, you know. And in such, in such a place, it might seem that these things are meant for the leaders. So when Brahmo says we are fasting, you might think that because you're not a leader, you can get away with, with breaking your fast at 2 o'clock. No, the gospel must continue with you, whether you are a leader or you're not a leader. Whether you are a prayer warrior or you're not a prayer warrior, whether you sing in the choir or you don't sing in the choir, 6 to 6 is 6 to 6 because the, the principles are the same. And if we're trying to achieve the end goal, 
you have to adhere to the principles of the rule. And so if we're doing six to six, it's not because you didn't come to church last week and nobody noticed and because you're not really a leader or you don't play an active role in church, you can get away with it because God sees you. God was the one who called you. Ramo did not call you. Kizito did not call you. Media team did not call you. It was God. And so you have a collective, you have a personal responsibility to God to fulfill the mandate for which he called you. And these are the things that give credibility to the truth we are trying to spread to the world. Because imagine if all of us, and this is the illustration God gave me actually, that there was a trophy cabinet and the trophies were there, lined up. And if our lives represent the trophies, then the more trophies there are, the more credibility the truth, which is the gospel we are trying to spread, has. Meanwhile, if the trophies keep falling off because midway somebody gets tired or midway, you know, you're upset, someone nudged you, you didn't like it, or you don't feel noticed, so you cry, you closed, you are denting the credibility of the gospel that you claim to be spreading, the truth that you claim to have accepted as a standard of your life. You, even you cannot represent that truth which is important that, once again, we remember that the gospel must continue with you. And the end goal of the gospel continuing with you is what we read in chapter 5, verse 13. If we can go back there. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Again, the word liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. For your advancement. Do not use the, the excellent place to advance your own cause. Do not use the excellent place to seek your own comfort. But, but through love, serve one another. And that is the goal of the excellent place, to serve one another through love. Because then, indeed, the gospel will continue through you. I hope you all understand where I'm at. Are you with me? I wanted to go back and speak to um, the trophy cabinet and people dropping off for various reasons, um, as valid as they may seem to you. Um, I was reminded of a word or something I saw when I was praying about two years ago where God, God spoke. He leaned forward and he spoke. And the word he spoke is shot very far into the future. And when it got to its destination, it dropped like a, it had a very dramatic drop. And then it became a full stop and it ended there. And from that full stop to where he first spoke, a line drew. And now I was at the beginning of the line. And I had to walk the line. Because when you walk the line and you finish, you get to the finish line, the end of the line, you have completed the sentence or you have completed the word that God spoke. However, if I stop midway, it means that that's the, that's the sentence, I've, that's the length of the sentence I have completed or I have written. And standing midway, I might think that God failed me or God didn't say it. You know, all the things that we, we toss about in our minds. But actually, when he said it, he finished it, right? Because it became a drop. It became a full stop. It ended there. And so that fulfills the, the, the word that everything he says really does not come back to him unaccomplished because he accomplished it when he said it. However, I didn't finish it because on the way I met so many setbacks, I met so many things, and then I stopped midway. And I started second guessing, did God see it? Or was I overthinking or whatever? I'm upset, all those things. And now I've stopped midway. So then the rest of the, the, rest of the sentence is there waiting for me to complete and I'm not laying hold of it because I've decided to stop the journey midway, which is important that we have the right focus if we are indeed pursuing the liberty of this excellent place, if we are indeed pursuing God as we claim to be doing. You, it is not good enough at this point that we allow the devil to distract us. It is not good enough at this point that we cannot rise above the little things, and I call them little because when you, look at the when you look at the situation from a broader perspective, you see how minute your distractions or the things that are pulling you away are. And um, it is very important that the truth of the gospel must continue with us. Amen. <laughs>